The story of the Sabbath begins at creation and continues to the present and the future. The subject matter is so massive, it would take hundreds of hours to exhaust it. All we could do is relate a small fraction of the interesting stories. Therefore, we decided to focus on information that might be new to Sabbatarians. We hope you have found it interesting and informative so far. And the most exciting parts of the story of the Sabbath are coming up in future episodes, so stick with us and tell your friends about our videos. Seventh-day Adventists are one of a handful of Protestant denominations that believe Christians should rest on the seventh day like ancient Israel and the Jews do today. They base this belief on the Ten Commandments. In addition, they believe the seventh-day Sabbath is the only day God set aside as a special day of worship. They believe that honoring any other day is disobedience to God's command. If Adventists are correct, then why do Christians attend worship services on Sunday? Adventists teach that in AD 321, the Roman Emperor Constantine issued an edict declaring Sunday as the day of Christian worship and that the Catholic Church caved to the Emperor's edict by shifting the sacred day from the seventh to the first day of the week. But did the Catholic Church really change the Sabbath day to Sunday? Is there really more to the story? We begin a new series that will be exploring the answers to those questions. We will start at the beginning from Genesis to Mount Sinai to the life of Christ to the Reformation through the 17th century Sabbath wars all the way to the end of the world. We will be telling the epic tale of this holy day. This is the story of the Sabbath. In this episode, we will be finishing up the story of the Sabbath before the time of Christ. The Old Testament in Protestant Bibles have 39 books that end with the story of Israel rebuilding the temple after their Babylonian exile. Chronologically, the Protestant Old Testament ends with the book of Nehemiah, about 538 BC. Catholic and Orthodox Bibles have some additional books called the Deuterocanonicals that take the story of Israel nearer to the time of Christ. Because these books are no longer in Protestant Bibles, many Protestants are not familiar with the history of the Jews between the rebuilding of the temple after the Babylonian exile in the time of Christ. Those centuries were when Alexander the Great conquered the known world, and later when the Roman Empire occupied Israel. Since this is the story of the Sabbath, we will relate a brief history of how the Sabbath factored in with the history of the Maccabees. So now we're joined by my wife, Teresa, and we are going to get into some of the history and the stories of, uh, of the first one's going to be really about the Maccabees, which is uh, in the Catholic Bible, you have Maccabees 1 and Maccabees 2, and the, it covers approximately the era between 175 to say around 140 BC. So everybody knows Alexander the Great. Well, this is talking particularly about Antiochus Epiphanes, who kind of even outdid Alexander the Great as far as his brutal ruthlessness. Um, he, in this, uh, in Maccabees 1, he has taken over and come through Egypt and rolls into Jerusalem to take it. And he does take it. And this is where you hear the, uh, the phrase, the, the Abomination. Yeah, abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation happens with this guy. At this time, Matthias was the high priest. He sees what he does in the temple, and he goes out through the streets and he starts telling everybody, saying, 
you got to get out of here. Yeah. You, you must leave the city. This is going to be bad. This is going to be really, really bad. People are going to die. And a lot of people left and they ran to, to the hills and caves and wherever they could get out of the city as Antiochus Epiphanes is just obliterating Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. So Antiochus sends his soldiers out to find these people and kill them. Well, they find out one of the caves uh, around there was a pretty big cave. There was a thousand Jews that had packed into this cave. Well, they found out and they said, well, why should we even risk our necks? We'll build fires in front and suck all the oxygen out and smoke and kill them. And they ended up killing over a thousand Jews in that cave. It was just horrifying. Well, well, you left out an important detail about what the, the day was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's okay. Antiochus Epiphanes knew very well what their holy day was, was the Sabbath. And when he wanted to really smoke them out or make sure he didn't get much pushback with their soldiers, he would send his soldiers out on Sabbath. And the the poor Jews would do nothing. They said, well, we can't fight back. And they would just sit there and get slaughtered. Matthias, the high priest, had a son. And his son was named Judas, Judas Maccabeus. He heard this. He had a lot of followers himself because, I mean, you know, he's in the family of the high priest. They ran and they left. And he took, uh, they said, somewhere around 6,000 um, men with him. It, to hide, to get away from there, just so they wouldn't be slaughtered. Well, the one thing, though, that um, Math Matthias, as the high priest mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. told him after the, he heard the story mm -hmm. about the thousand people That's being right. slaughtered, mm -hmm. he said, okay, as high priest, I make, this, um, I make this proclamation to you. All Jews are allowed to uh, defend fight, themselves. Yeah, fight back. It, yeah. It's if, the if first it's time... Even, Right, even They'd if it's on Sabbath, he said, we shall all be slaughtered. We shall be no more as a people if we continue to not fight back on Sabbath. So he was the very first of the, of the Maccabeans that, mm -hmm. that said, hey, you know, right. just fight back. Right. So this is the very beginning of uh, this whole history during this time of Judas Maccabeus. It, it sounds almost like Robin Hood a lot of those stories except he had you know, more men but with this very small band of soldiers he battle after battle after battle um, would absolutely annihilate vastly larger armies than he uh, he would pray um, and he the Lord would bless him and they would uh, just slaughter the enemy and the enemy got to be where they were quite scared of Judas uh, because of his his fighting ability was just amazing. And um, there was a second story where in uh, Maccabees 2, it talks about uh, they were coming up to another large battle. He knew that this vast army was coming at them. And it talks about how this vast army, it kind of sounds like a Lord of the Rings, really. He had elephants. He had uh, uh, cavalry. He had all these these mighty warriors in this gleaming armor, and it was very, very intimidating. And Judas prayed to the Lord, and he said, "No, we we can't fight. It's Sabbath. We're not going to fight on the Sabbath day." And the there was a, uh, a he was a prophet. Jeremiah's yeah well Jeremiah is is how it's 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 actually spelled in Maccabees it says Jeremiah's but it's yeah Jeremiah. wasn't the prophet at that time I mean I'm sorry the high priest at that time Onias yes um, I think that yeah yep, high priest Onias came to Judas and he said I have I have had a vision I have had a dream from the Lord and the Lord and he hands Judas a golden sword and he says this is from from the Lord he says and you are to go battle them. So from the Lord, he was he was told to go battle on on Sabbath. It was a big deal, and they, they just slaughtered the other army. He was just 
they're actually kind of wonderful, great stories yeah. to hear and kind of see where Tolkien got a lot of his yeah. material from. Yeah. But anyway, so, so that it kind of tells you about during the Sabbath then that was a transition yeah. of how the Jews saw it yep. as a as very know. devout to Sabbath. Over this period of time, Israel was in had, was having all this uh, oppression, and they kind of equated it back to uh, their time in Egypt when they had that 400 years of uh, of you know enslavement in Egypt, and so they're feeling the same way. They had ever since um, Alexander the Great, Israel had been taken over by the Medes and Persians, and um, then the Romans, and so they, all this time frame, they're thinking we had a deliverer with Moses, but. Even though we don't have Moses, Moses promised that there was going to be a coming Savior. So there were hints of this Savior Messiah that was going to come. Even though it wasn't outright, they had hints of it um, in the book. Uh, well, uh, uh, they were foreshadowed in the people of um, Abraham. Abraham and Jacob mm -hmm. and King David. These were kind of the prototypes of the Savior Messiah to come. Mm -hmm. And in the books of Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, De Deuteronomy, Samuel, Psalms, Hosea, Jeremiah, Malachi, Zechariah, Daniel, Isaiah, and Micah, all of these gave little hints of uh, that the Messiah was coming. Yes. And so it wasn't just Ezra scholars, it was scholars across the world. Holy men began to realize, they started to, to really dig deep into these old prophecies and realized, you know what? The prophecies are being fulfilled. And so all of a sudden, Israel during these 400 years became more and more anxious for a Messiah. And as the time grew nearer, interestingly enough, the Sabbath grew in importance during this time. You know, originally, the, the Israel had seen the Messianic era as a time that was going to be exclusively to Israel. Um, it was a time of peace and prosperity where uh, the Messiah uh, would come just specifically for Israel and Israel would be perfected. That's really important to remember. Israel was going to be perfected so that they could rule as God's messengers. It wasn't God coming down like we think about it in the next one. It, it, you know, the second coming is Jesus coming down and ruling. They thought that the kingdom of heaven would come through the rulers of David. You know, the, the house of David. And that they would be political. And the nations, all the other nations that were not Israel, would be punished. And judgment would come upon them. And Israel would be a political and religious theocracy in the world. There's so many things that remind us of today what was happening then. Just think about how we now are seeing all the prophecies, you know. That's uh, right. I come to, to fruition right. and we're all expecting, you know, it's got to be soon. So, well, so we kind of understand how, how these people were feeling, that Israel was feeling. And so they started to read Daniel. The pro Daniel was the very last prophet of Israel. And so his, oh, his writings were, were being studied by everyone. And when they saw the abomination of desolation at the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, after the time of the Maccabees, there was even this idea that the Messiah would be pre-existent, which, okay, now we're formulating the true Christ coming in here. Because of the tumultuous rulership of the Romans and Hasmonean rulership, Israel was longing for a return to the strong government under the house of David. So, which they're just they keep on doubling down that the the uh, the the not Christ but the the God coming in is going to be some kind of a power like a king or a, right. some kind of a political yeah a prince uh, of the house yeah. of David yeah that's right so now we have all these sources that they were looking to now we don't a lot of christians don't don't really know who, what these sources are but they these were the sources that they were looking to at then at that time there were these books called the jubilees the assumption of moses uh the sibyls the book of enoch the psalter of, so of solomon the writings of philo uh the mishnah 
Well, that would become later, but the, the beginnings of the Mishnah that would be later put into the Mishnah, the, the, the teachings, then. yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had the Deuterocanonical books besides the Maccabees. Right. There were some Messianic um, hints in the Book of Wisdom and Judith and Tobit and Baruch. Okay, now we're getting to the really important part. In the decades that was leading up to Christ, yeah, as a yeah. nation, they had yeah. Israel had to be perfect. And so uh, there were some prominent um, rabbis at this time that they said, okay, we're going to keep the law. Everybody, we're going to keep the law perfectly. If we keep it perfectly, then we will get out of this mess. We will no longer have to deal with the Romans and the Greeks. We, The Messiah will come if we become perfect. So they, there was this emphasis of follow the law, follow the law. Um, it was Israel's corruption and disobedience that was keeping the anointed one from coming and freedom was going to be given to them. Yeah. So in, at last, in frustration of the perfection of these stiff-necked people, a very prominent rabbi announced that the Sabbath was kind of the heart of the law. It was the symbol and the sign of the law. So, okay, if they could just keep two Sabbaths in a row. And do you remember why they had to keep two? <laughs> Not one, but two. Because they figured one of the Sabbaths could be just a fluke. Yeah, that's right. But if you had two in a row, then it would show intent. So that means that's everybody right. in uh, all the Jews as a body would have done something of perfection that's right. to allow yes, that's right. this if we could second coming just to happen. Two Sabbaths in a row, the yeah. Messiah would come. And uh, anyway, so we want to set this up for you for the next video. So we have Israel that think of themselves, they're going to get a new Moses. Things are going to change from if only they could keep two Sabbaths holy and just keep two Sabbaths in a row, but all of them have to do it together. And um, I think we're going to understand better what's going to happen with Christ and the Sabbath Yes. in our next video. Yes, absolutely. So that wraps this particular uh, video up for the story of the Sabbath. And we really hope that you liked it and come back for more. Uh, If you would, like everybody says, click the bell, click subscribe, and tell all your friends about it. And uh, Because next time, we're starting to talk about the New Testament, the New Covenant. The New Covenant. Jesus comes in and how he transforms the seven. That's right. Thank you for listening. God God bless bless you. you.